George Walker. You're one of us now. Visit us, okay? I will. Take care now, small green walkers. So I think AC veterans might recognize this here, but uh, what exactly is Eivor chasing down? Yeah, so here you're seeing Eivor um, running down one of our tattoo uh, images. So this is challenging the player on free run abilities, but also for fans of the series, sort of pulling at their heartstrings for some beloved features. <laughs> So are we going to be able to tattoo Eivor? Yes. By collecting these tattoos, you actually bring them to back to your settlement, and then you can customize different body parts, having different tattoos everywhere. So again, another form of expression, and it's sort of to represent that, Vul that Viking culture. Fizz, one of my favorite things when I was just out there exploring East Anglia was coming upon a house or a building and realizing that there was a chest inside, but that there was no easy way in. And in this case... I saw all the doors were barred, but I knew that because there was a chest in there, there must have been some way to get inside. Uh, so I went around the back and, you know, found a way in. Yeah, I'm glad you actually caught on to that. You're pointing at something that we wanted to work on a lot on Valhalla, where we wanted the exploration to make you feel smarter. So we, we played a lot with puzzle solving, so making sure that every house that you find sort of appeals to you like it draws your attention and then when you want to come and explore it's not it's not given to you you still have to work for it a little bit so it'll challenge you on your observation skills um logic just trying to find how do i get into this so we play a lot with uh level design quest design to offer challenges to players and if you basically come out of it like with a better feeling for the exploration but you also get to see more of a story behind any of these locations which we've crafted so it, it gave us a little bit more time to sort of slow down the experience and and tell a different version of a story a poor victim of someone's fury yeah i mean speaking about exploration and just finding things out in the world i was just wandering and came across this clearing and found this kind of morbid altar yeah so this is this is one of our bigger events that we we have um scattered in the world so as eivor explores um she can find um altars like this and by interacting with them here it's a trap that's been set um for by by this character named regan um now, there's a bigger story behind all this. It, it, there's multiple steps to it later on. Um, so this, this is one of the moments. Uh, it, it, it permits us to go into a slightly more mystical realm and play with a boss fight that has more magical abilities, if we will, and, and basically have this awesome boss fight in the middle of the swamps. And so here, the abilities that you see uh, Reagan using, like, are a little bit on the mystical side of things. What's happening is Eivor at the beginning of that trap is poison, and so she starts sort of hallucinating, seeing the world in a sort of different uh, light and filter. Um, and so that that's sort of what lets us go into this this the the realm of the weird. My rage, spirit of my father's rage, fill me. saw here that Regan belongs to something called the Daughters of Lyrium? Yeah, that's correct. By finding the other daughters, you'll get a little bit more backstory on who they are, so we don't want to spoil that too much. But it creates like a, a sort of greater story that is not on the main path in any way, but it, it's still very rich and adds to the lore of this world and actually plays into history. So we just had a really exciting, really intense boss battle. I think it's time for something a little bit more relaxing and calming now. Yeah, it's all, here it's all about pacing yourself with the highs and the lows. So here we have a low chill moment of what we call building a cairn. So Eivor, as she explores the world, will find these sort of meditative areas where you have...
have a, a pile of rocks that you could just stack on one and on top of another using physics. And I mean, yeah, the, the ultimate goal is to try and get the highest pile of rocks. But really, it's about taking in the sights, um, relaxing, taking a step back, and and build just building something. Together, we stack stones into cairns. These? Yes. Think of this as a test of mind and wit. Stack the cairn stones high and wide into any shape you like. I mean, you can spend as much time as you want building these things, making them as high as you want, as weird as you want. I'm sure, like, a lot of these stuff will end up on the internet, like people comparing structures. And the cool thing is that once you've built it and you decide to get out of it, it sort of stays there. And so that's yours, right? And until the moment where you come back and you want to build a new one, it's, it's sort of cool that we were able to to give that to players to express themselves. At this point in the demo, we've explored East Anglia, <coughs> we've met some children, we've broken into a house, we've fought a boss, we've built a carrot. I think now it's finally time to go and head off to Oswald's wedding. Yeah, so this is the, this is the moment it's all been building up to. Um, by the moment you get into the territories, territory, it's sort of like mentioned by Oswald that he's trying to uh, get married with his Dane lady. And so as you go through the arc, um, that's sort of like the underlying thread. Really, it's about Ruid creating turmoil in the uh, territory and helping Oswald sort of um, get above that and, and show that he's a good leader. And so you finally, after going through all of that arc, uh, finally get these two together, go through their their, we their wedding, and you're invited to attend the ceremony. Um, and then all the uh, activities and fun times that come afterwards. Yeah, as much as we've seen the brutal side of England, we it's nice to see you know, the joyous side of it as well. Yeah, and it's something we really wanted to, to play on in, in Valhalla, where <coughs> being a Viking is not only about being a raider or a warrior. I mean, there's revelry, there's feasting, there's partying that goes, and like, if, if someone knows how to party, it's a Viking. And so here, this is one of our opportunities to sort of show that, show what a, a sort of Viking gathering is. And what's cool here is it's a, it's a good alliance of Norse culture with Saxon culture, sort of smashing those th two things together um, and building bridges. Yeah, I mean, what's a wedding without some drunk archery, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, anything can happen in a, in a Viking event, right? Eivor, yeah, here, here, just get drunk, some sh shoot some arrows. Oh, barely a challenge. Steady all, and ready yourself for the wedding race. The king and his bride against all. My king. He... <laughs> So here we see the decision I made to spare Ruid came back to bite us. Yep, that, that's the decision you made um, coming back. Um, so uh, as we said before, all of your decisions have consequences, and this is a big one. I challenge you. I accept you're basically presented with the option to sort of step in for Oswald, Oswald fight the fight for him, or let him go and fight his own fight. Yeah, you know, personally, I chose to fight myself because I, I thought Eivor is the type of person who likes to finish what she started. Plank by plank, and a dead king cannot keep his oaths. Let me finish this. Oswald, you gutless Arius swine! I'll slay the wolf kissed, then hang you with your own tongue. How does this encounter with Ruid differ from our previous fight with him? Uh, so at this point, you've eliminated his wolf, so it's just him. And so he he's angry at this point, and so he will start using his his big gun abilities like fairly early on in the fight. Um, so it's way more vicious, way faster. Um, there's less strategy. He goes literally swords blazing at you. Um, and so th this is a fight to the death. Of 
course, here, like, this is a decision you made to go and fight him, but there's multiple outcomes to this scenario. You could have let uh, Oswald fight his own fight um, and prove, basically, his station as, as the rightful leader. Um, if you had eliminated Ruet, obviously, this would not have happened. It would have been a slightly more joyous occasion. Um, but ultimately, in all scenarios, you still have an alliance with Oswald. He's proven to be um, the right leader for this territory um, and to be a good ally for you. I promised you an alliance, and now you have it. And one day I will need you to make good on that alliance. So we're about to take off from the wedding, but Eivor decides it's a good idea to check up on her friend Finner. Yeah, so Finner, Finner is probably one of the more recurring characters in, in this arc. You get to meet him very on. He's a very endearing character, um, sort of used to have a Viking life, sort of misses it, and going through all these adventures together is sort of like... Uh, lights that fire back and so he's he's willing to join you in your raiders um so he's one of many raiders that you'll you'll encounter in the game and you can sort of recruit bring back home and then have them sort of join you on your adventures on the on long ship he can tell you these stories that we're telling you about you get a little bit to know a little bit more about him um so again it's a fun way to sort of discover more about these characters that you meet and bring him along for adventures together together I'll gather my things. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our Assassin's Creed Valhalla playthrough. Fizz, thank you so much for joining us. When and where can people play it? Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be out on Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 and is coming to Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PC, and Stadia on November 17th. Assassin's Creed Valhalla.